What's going on guys and welcome to another video. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on so you know when I drop new videos. Today, we are gonna tackle a problem that I know a lot of you guys are facing and that is the art of handling the wrong number situation on a cold call. So we're gonna go through a few of those calls and then I'm gonna give you the guidelines on how to handle these situations. So without further ado, Let's hop right in this. I know exactly where, you're, where your career is headed because of the way that you communicate. Yeah. Just the way that you communicate with people and really connect and you got the you do you got the right tone and the pauses and the speed and everything, man. The way that you communicate is just top notch first class and that is the number one skill. I need to watch Marquess Branson's video like seriously like 15 times. This is groundbreaking, like life-changing stuff when you listen to this guy talk, I'm serious. What's up everybody, Marquez Branson here, realtor in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We're getting ready to go through a few calls, so I'm gonna hop here on my computer, play some callbacks, and we're gonna run through some of my you know, tone, some of my scripts and what I'm saying to get you past that wrong number situation and get you on to getting those emails to build your database. Hello? Hey, Brittany. So right there, at this point, I know this is not the person that I'm calling, a different name, uh, Brittany is what popped up on the screen, and their reaction was completely, I don't know, who, who are you talking about, right? So that's what you really gotta understand that, hmm, wrong number, so I need to go into a different, I need to take this a different way, right? So watch what I do. Oh, I'm looking for Brittany. Oh, you have the wrong number. Oh, okay, this, this number is linked to this property on Buffalo Creek in DeSoto, Texas. Does that ring a bell at all? So the first thing you want to do with wrong numbers is you want to pique the prospect's interest, right? How do we do that? By giving them some information that they probably don't even know or have, right? So what I do is I say, oh, okay, this number is linked to this property over on Buffalo Creek. You hear that tone? Over on Buffalo Creek? Does that ring a bell? Right? And it gets them to thinking about, well, why is my number linking to this property, right? It shouldn't be linking to this property. So that's what I use in order to peak, get a little peak interest, right? And it kind of gets them off guard, right? So that's what I'm using. Let's hear how we go. Yes, we used to live there. Now, on wrong number calls, you're gonna go one of two ways. You're gonna get an answer like that. Yes, we used to live there, or we used to live there a couple years ago, we lived there 10 years ago, whatever, right? But the other direction it can go is, no, I don't know what you're talking about, right? I don't know what's going on, right? But this one there, hey, yeah, we used to live there, and watch how I respond. Oh, okay, I was about to say, this number looks like an Arkansas number, okay? It is, <laughs> it's it Arkansas is. Yeah. Now that's a one-off. I just noticed that there was an 870 number. That's an Arkansas. I recognize that. So I tried to build a little rapport with her and that's what I did. But I'll show you what we do on the other wrong number calls in the, the next couple of calls. But let's continue with this one. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, my name is Mark Brand. Straight into who I am, right? Now I want to go ahead and establish who I am, right? It's like building blocks, right? First, I'm going to establish, let them know why I'm, I'm calling you because of this your number's tied to this property, right? And then she's like, okay, well, she still doesn't know who I am, what I'm about. So why why are you calling about a property anyway? Oh, now my name is Mark Branson. I'm a local realtor over here in Mansfield. Watch this. And I'm a realtor over here in Mansfield. Um, yeah, I just sold a house in that neighborhood and I was calling some neighbors, seeing if I could help anybody else. Okay, okay, well, yeah, a house. You, it may not be your house that you sold. I actually sold one in this neighborhood, so it may not be one that you sold. So what you say is, okay, well, yeah, a, a house just sold over in that neighborhood there, and, you know, I was calling some neighbors, just seeing if I could help out, and your number was tied to this property. That's interesting, right? Because you're you're trying to make it sound like you're baffled about it as well. Like, hmm, that's interesting. I don't know why your number's linked to it. This ain't, you don't own that property. That's interesting, right? Oh yeah, we no longer live over there. We was renting anyway when we lived there. Do you see how she opened up now? Because we piqued her interest, right? Now we told her who we are and why we're calling. It makes sense. Now the two things are connecting and now she's being a little more open and forthright about what the situation was. And this is where we're gonna get her to talking, right? Once she gets to talking, that's when we can kind of weave and maneuver and lead the conversation into where we wanna go. Oh really? I got you, that makes sense, okay. Did you hear that? That's super key. 
as soon as she explains what it was, now we're gonna say, oh, okay, I got you. That makes sense, right? We, we, we together, me and the prospect, have put this thing together, right? Now we building some rapport. I've tried to explain to her why it's Lincoln. She's explained to me why it's Lincoln. Now it makes sense why, oh, okay, I got you. We both are understanding, and that builds rapport. Okay, what part of Arkansas are you from? I went to school over there in UCA. So at this point, remember we had an Arkansas conversation. Now I'm building more rapport. And like I said, I'm gonna ask her what part of Arkansas she's from, but notice how I also go ahead and divulge where I played or why, what my connection to Arkansas was. That's key, right? If you just ask what part of Arkansas are you from, uh, depending on the person, right? It'll be a little, you know, they'll give you something back or they may not. But if you go ahead and divulge a little information yourself, then it, make, it frees it up for them to do the same. I went, I'm from Pine Bluff. Okay, I got you, okay. UAPB, um, all day. I got you, okay. Yup. Well, <laughs> well Arthur, you still out here in Texas or you, did you move back home? Now, I'm trying to see, you know, is he, is it worth me really in trying to, you know, pursue getting the email address from this person? Because if they're not even in Texas, uh, likelihood of them buying or selling the house out here is small, but I mean, you can go after it, but now I'm doing more of logistics, right? Okay, do you still live here in Texas then, right? No, I've been here for uh, 11 hey. years. Okay, yeah, you stay in put. I love Texas, man, I love it for sure. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Now watch my transition. I'm here to stay. I got you, okay, well, hey, if you're ever in the market, maybe wanna, you know, buy or sell a house or might just wanna, you know, lease one again, do you have an agent that you work with? Boom, straight to the point, quick. On the draw, we had we built a little rapport. We're not going to spend too too much time there, and then into the transition. That's the thing you really need to have down packed. Cold calling wrong numbers, cold calling regular people. Regardless, you need to have your transitions down and be able to be smooth in the transitions, right? Yes, I do. My uh, best friend is a realtor, but we we recently bought our home here in Cedar Hill about Did four it? years ago. Mm -hmm. So now she's told me that she does have an agent. Right, her best friend. Well, here's the thing that we all know of being an agent. 90% of agents don't make it, right? So what really happens is people's friends and all that sort of thing, by the time they're ready to sell a house again, because you, I think the statistics used to be, you know, every four to five years people sell a house, but now it's even getting pushed out a little more. I don't know the statistics, so don't quote me, but I think it's like a little more than five. It's like six, seven, eight, maybe 10, something like that. So the likelihood of her friend still being a realtor is probably small, right? I know I'm gonna be in the business because I know we're here, you're on my channel because we're cold calling. And that's the thing that most realtors won't do because they won't, they don't want to prospect, right? So with this instance, I, I felt like, okay, well, she has a realtor. There's no harm in me being the backup and that's what I'll do. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and I'm gonna acknowledge that she has, you know, realtor say, okay, good. You're getting great hands. Okay, well, hey, and watch my transition. Mm -hmm. I got you. Okay, no We've worries. We've been here four years. Yeah. I got you. Okay, okay. Well, you know, I've been in this business a long time. I kind of, you know, see a lot of agents come and go, and, you know, a lot of them are retiring. Uh, yeah. Would it, be a, would it be a crazy idea if we stayed in touch? Maybe, you know, keep me as a backup or something. Did you hear all that spiel? Okay, okay. Well, hey, I've been in this business a long time. I, you know, I see agents come and go, and you know, a lot of them are retiring too. So, would it be a, you know, crazy idea if we stayed in touch? Maybe keep me as a backup. Or so, right? Because is it is it false information that agents come and go from this business? Is it false information that a lot of the agents, most agents are age, the average agent age is 50 years old. So they are retiring. So I just want to position myself. If something happens with her agent, who's not able to do the job, well, she has someone she's built a relationship with over the long term. And that's where that comes from. Okay, I sure will. And what's your name again? My name is Mark Branson, like Sir Richard Branson. Okay, okay. Yeah. Almost, sure, almost I can I can do you one better. If you have a you know good email, I'll just shoot you my info and you know you just have it on file if you ever need it. That's a smooth transition I created as well. Hey, you know, people will say, okay, well just shoot me your information in text. Hey, just send me this this way. Just send me that this way. Well, what you're looking for is the email, right? So, hey, I can do you one better if you have a good email. I'll just shoot you my information and you can just have it on file if you ever need it. But the tone is important, right? And so if you haven't heard my uh, my video on the tone, go and watch the other one I had a little earlier. But the tone is important. Like, it's really unassuming. Okay, well, hey, you just have it on file if you ever need it, you know? That makes sense, right? 
Again, it's the underlying tones that make these things go. Okay, yeah, Sharonda. And then I got the email, right? So let's hop on to the next call. This is Evelyn. Hey, Evelyn, this is Mark Branson. I'm, I'm a realtor over here in Mansfield. Did I catch you at a bad yes, time? So again, this is another wrong number call, but I love it when people answer the phone and they say, my, like she said, my name is Evelyn. Well, the name that was actually on it was Miss Bush. It was, it was a name I can't really pronounce, but her, her last name is Bush, who is not this person, right? So instead of, you know, when they answer like that and it's definitive that it's somebody else, right? Then you just kind of go into your spiel. Um, it all depends on what you need. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I wasn't trying to take a bunch of your time. I, uh, I actually just sold the house over in DeSoto, and this number was tied to one of the neighboring properties. So I was calling some neighbors, seeing if I could help out anybody else. So here's what I just did. I noticed this is the wrong person, so I'm going to call it out. This is a great tactic to use because you're going to call it out. And you're not going to spend a lot of time trying to figure things out, right? If you go ahead and call it out to them and you're giving it to them like a present, like, okay, well, your number's tied to this property. And I was calling some neighbors. I, I, your number's tied to this property. That's why I called you. That, that's why I'm, that's the only reason I'm calling you because your number's tied to this property. That's what I'm doing right there. And it disarms them. Watch. Um, okay. No, I'm not looking to buy anything out there right now. Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, I got you. No worries. Okay. Well, in the future, if you ever, you know, get in the market, anything like that, do you have a, you know, good realtor that you work with? Bam. Right. So I went into it. We went through it. We went through my little spiel at the beginning and then quick transition. Your transitions are so important to nail those and have you have to be smooth when you're talking and not really, you know, fidgeting, not really stuttering, not really, you know, stumbling on your words. Your transitions have to be smooth. I'm not looking for anything in the future. No. Thank you, okay. though. Yeah, no worries. Okay, okay. You hear that? Yeah, no worries. Okay, that's no problem. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not trying to sell you nothing. No worries. I got you. Mm -hmm. Cool. No worries. No problem. Right? Play with it. Play with this. Like, sit at home and play with this. I'm being serious with you guys. I did this for my, you know, first 10,000 calls, right? I would record these when I was terrible. And I may do a video about that when I, my first few calls. They were bad. <laughs> it was just bad. It just is what it is. But I got the skill in order to continue to overcome objections, in order to really hone in the tone. It's really important. Hey, you know, life happens. If something ever changes, would it be a you know crazy idea if we stayed in touch and maybe I could help out? Okay, yeah, that's fine. Right? Okay, well, hey, you know, life happens, man. Think about 2020, right? You can use that because of what has happened in our world, right? 2020 was crazy for all of us. We all felt that, right? And we thought we were just moseying along with our own little lives and bam, 2020 happens. And it's like, what in the world? So it's under, it's relatable. It's understandable. Okay, well, hey, you know, life happens. If anything ever changes, you know, would it be a crazy idea if we stayed in touch? That's the tone. You're like, you can say the words that I'm giving you, but if you don't have the tone, it's not going to land the same way. That's cool. Okay, okay. What's just the, text your contact information to this number. Remember what I told you on the last call? Just text your contact information to this number, right? Just text your contact information to this number. Now, hey, listen, it's not going to work all the time, right? If you say, okay, well, I can do you one better. If you have a good email, I can, you know, shoot you, to, right? It's not going to work all the time. But I'm telling you, once you get good at it, you'll start to get 50 50. And you'll, get, you'll even get better with your 75 25, where you're getting 75% of them. But we'll see what happens on this one. Okay, I can do you one better. If you have a good email, I can send you, you know, all my info and you just keep it on file if you ever need it. You can send it through text. <laughs> see, it didn't work. It, it, it not necessarily went over. She wasn't, you know, I, we built a little rapport. We didn't build maybe enough. I could probably go in for an overcoming objection on this, but I'm not, I'm, I have an abundance mindset, right? I want to work with people who want to work with me. And when I build a database full of people that want to work with me, my business then explodes because all the referrals, they're going to speak so highly of me, right? Do I think this person, you know, thinks I'm, you know, weird? Or do I think this person thinks, you know, I'm not, you know, scamming or something? I don't know. But she wasn't necessarily open to that. But that's what I send them a picture of my business card and then a link to my website, which is my squeeze page, within 
builds the brand outside of there. So if she clicks on the button, she sees who I am. You never know, this person might call me later on down the road. Okay, okay, I'll text you to this number. I'll text you a picture of my business card. Would that work? That'll work. Okay, all right, you have a blessed rest of your day and I appreciate you. You too, bye-bye. Yes, ma'am. Straight, simple, sweet. But you see, even though I only got to get them, you know, send a text to them, it was still a smooth call, right? It was still, you know, I was able to introduce myself, I didn't get hung up on, none of the above, but that's because of the tone, that's because of the transitions, it's a culmination of everything. All right, let's hop into our final call. Hey, this is Mark Granson, I'm a realtor over here in Plano. Did I catch you at a bad time? So here's why I went with that. The person popped up as an LLC. I don't know the person's name. Somebody said, hello. Okay, hey, this is Mark Branson. I'm a realtor over here in Mansfield. Did I catch you at a bad time? Now I'm speaking to them like I'm assuming they know who I am. Key. Um, I'm currently working. Can I help you? I'm currently working. I'm busy. I'm blase. I'm ble Whatever they're going to say. Oh, okay, okay. Agree. Oh, okay, okay. I got you. I understand. I get it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It, it'll only take a second if you could spare real quick, right? Everybody has a second. It's only it'll only take a second if you could spare real quick, real fast. It's not it's not anything gonna take a long time. Real quick, that's the tone you gotta have. That watch. Okay, okay, yeah, it won't take nothing but a second. I uh, I actually was giving you a call. I just sold the house over in the neighborhood there in Little Elm, and I was calling some neighbors, seeing if I could help anybody else. Quick, short. I didn't even give her a chance to respond. Usually I let them respond, but I just went ahead and said it because then that furthermore lets them know that, yeah, it was only a quick question I had for you, right? Yeah, actually the second person that's called me about um, the house in Little Elm, we have a this is gonna be a key thing that I'm going to do. Whenever someone says, oh, you're not the only person that's called me on this property. Oh, really, you, getting these you get these calls all the time? This is another form of calling it out, right? You wanna call it out while they're talking about it, right? Oh, really? Okay, you get these calls all the time, don't you? I got you. That's crazy, right? You want to try to be like you're their family or friend on the phone with them. Like, oh, we get these calls all the time, man. You see what I'm saying? I've been there in several years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? The one over there on Pelican Drive, you've gotten calls? Yeah. Yeah, yeah by you. Like a person today, so we wow. don't live there anymore. You don't live there anymore, yeah. Don't live there anymore. Yeah, no, I got you. Yeah, we didn't even own that house, so. No. All right. No worries, no worries. Well, let me ask this before I let you go up. That's a good That's a good one to take as well. I do that too. Hey, because it's also another thing that's saying, hey, let me ask you this real quick, and then I'll let you, I'll let you go, right? Like, you're, you're reiterating the fact that it's not gonna take a long time. Okay, okay, well, let me ask you this real quick, and then I'll let you go. I know you, I know you gotta go. I respect your time, right? If you're ever in the market again, maybe five, 10 years from now, do you have an agent that you work with? Into the transition, smooth, quick, concise, right? Um, we are, no, we don't right now, but we're not even, oh. we, we just bought our house about three years ago, so we are oh. doing good for now. Thank you so much, though. Yeah, no worries, no worries. I was gonna see, would it be a you know crazy idea if we kept in touch? Maybe I can help you out, you know, whenever the time comes again. Um, sure, I mean, I, I've actually worked in the industry myself, so. <laughs> Now she gave me something that I can relate with. Oh, you work in the industry? Okay, so we're gonna talk a little, I'm gonna try to get her to talk a little bit about that. You visit banking, mortgage, what you got going on, right? Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, well, hey, so if you have a good email, what I'll do, I'll just send you my info, and if you ever need it, give me a call. Okay. Right, you hear that tone? I'll just send you my info, if you ever need it, give me a call, right? That's no big deal, it's just an email. I mean, it's just an email, right? It's the tone, it's serious. All right, it's, um... And then she gives you an email, right? And so after that, we go into more about the banking and whatnot, kind of build a little rapport after the fact. But it's so crucial and key just to have, you know, some comebacks and they have to be smooth, right? You can't really sound choppy and you can't really sound nervous on the phone because it comes through in your voice. It comes through when you're talking to people. So if you guys made it to the end of the video, I appreciate you guys. As always, I appreciate you. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you know when I'm dropping new videos. And in the meantime, I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.